I bet you I'll have tickets by five after ten. Perfect. Good job. Thank you. At this time, I will call the meeting of the Marshall City Council to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. We do have an agenda before us. Are there any changes to that agenda? If not, we'll operate under that agenda. The first item would be consider the approval of the minutes from the regular council meeting that was held on June 27th of this year. The council does have the minutes. Are there any corrections? If Move not, approval. Second. Motion by Craig, seconded by Amanda to approve the minutes as they have been presented. We'll move to a vote. And we'll close the voting. I don't know, mine was weird too. Okay. Did you vote yes? I tried. There we go. Well, it keeps telling me it's not open. But you're, you're a yes, right? Yes. So the, the motion does pass. Uh, we'll note that uh, it did pass unanimously. Agenda item number two, it would be the award of bids for um, the project ST032, lot two, block one of the Schwann's Corp Edition parking lot repavement improvement projects, uh, currently owned by RALCO. So we'll have the, uh, the resolution that would declare the official intent uh, regarding the reimbursements of the expenditures with the proceeds of tax exempt bonds. And then following that, we'll consider the resolution that would accept the bid and award the contract. I will call on uh, Jason Anderson, Director of Public Works, City Engineer, to present this agenda item. Jason. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so this is the, uh, as you mentioned, the repaving of the parking lot across from Atlantic Place, just across the river. Um, it's a six inch concrete surface over the existing aggregate base section. On July 6th, bids were received and the low bid came from D&G Excavating in the amount of $221,243.20. Uh, the project would be 100% assessed to the property owner, Nakamus Enterprises, LLC with special assessments paid back over uh, an eight year period of time. Uh, total cost with contingency and engineering fees considered is $269,474.22. Uh, staff would recommend to award to the low bid um, provided by D&G Excavating. And Jason, the, um, um, this property is owned by the Nakamas Enterprises but this parking would uh, be available for public use just as it has been in the past. That is correct. Public parking available in this lot. Questions for Jason? We do have a, a, also a written use agreement with them for that. That's correct. Any other input or questions? If not, uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Jim. Is there a second? Second. Second by Craig. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. I, scroll on. I still have minutes for some reason. I'll try it. There you go. And then for some reason, I still have the minutes. Oh. I still have the minutes vote. It's showing up as approval of minutes. Oh, so you're back one. So we have some technology issues, Stephen. Because I already before we close the voting. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. We'll now close the voting. <laughs> and the motion does pass. 
We'll move then to agenda item number three. This uh, agenda item you know, is for replacement of the exterior siding of an airport hangar located at the airport, 1622 West College Drive. Once again, Jason. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is the replacement of all the uh, siding or the tin material on the outside of hangar 1622 at the airport. This quote uh, for, is all labor materials and equipment required to re-tin the whole facility, including the 20 by 60 bifold door. Um, there's also, I believe, some walk doors being replaced that were included in here as well. Um, total amount, uh, low quote out of the three received was from e &K Construction of Redwood Falls in the amount of $68,055. Uh, we have 80,000 in our capital improvement fund levy for this project and staff would recommend to award to the low quote. Okay. Thank you. Craig, any uh, input from the airport commission? No. Questions? I have a question and you can just tell me, no, we can't do this, but since the bids are so close between Bladholm and the gentleman out of Redwood Falls, which I think they're both good contractors, could we accept the bid of our local contractor over the bid, or is that setting a bad precedent? And I'm just asking the question. Uh, City Attorney Pam, do you want to weigh in this on this too? Do you want to answer that first? Yeah. Uh, so I can I can start, and yeah. Pam can help me out here. Okay. Um, so typically, and in the past, our precedent has always been to award to the low bid or quote to ensure that we have a stable and fair process and ensure that people still want to participate with us. As far as some of the legality, uh, Pam could weigh on that as well. Yeah, so this is, since it's under the 175,000, this is a request for quotes as opposed to an official competitive bid um, process. Um, so you can have some more di direct negotiation. However, you want to make sure that your decision is reasonable and is based on um, you know what the most reasonable bidder is and and just because they're local is not necessarily um, a reason that wouldn't be seen as arbitrary okay i know in the past on vehicles we've gone up to five percent where the local bidder has been five percent higher than another bid and we've accepted it so we have a city have set a precedence of doing that so do we i'm just asking the question we've done it with with equipment is this different than equipment? Uh, if I may, and I think Councilman, you're referring to when we compare local quotes for vehicles or equipment against state contract, correct? Not necessarily, because I know we've had a bid where Marthaler was cheap, lower bidder, but we went through Lockwood to get the vehicle even though they were higher. So we have set the precedence of doing this. And then Craig, you and I had this conversation earlier. And I'm, I'm fine, I just wanted to bring up the conversation. If we do it for that, this is cool, so why is this different? And I understand the point, we're gonna stay fair at the bidding too, I'm just, I just discussion to have here. So it's lowest responsible bidder, council member. So lots of criteria can go into what is a responsible bidder. And so as long as the, the council's having that discussion and the record shows that there's reasons that are supportive of um, what the lowest responsible bidder is, is um, and this again is not even bidding. It's it's mm. more quotes and negotiation. Cool. So you have actually even more flexibility um, than when there's official bids. But uh, so if you know you have that's within your scope of authority, you just need to have that conversation and make that determination as a decision making body that's reflected on the record. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Steve. So you know I think it's nice to have local people do it and by local we want to use city first however council member Lazinski, when you're looking at vehicles and we go here there's also the maintenance of the vehicle there's transportation for that and service and you can do it here but then you're buying and getting it serviced at the same place so there's continuity this is a building hopefully there's they do maintenance it right to these doors too there's maintenance to these buildings. But i don't think that the contractor is going to do the maintenance correct me if i'm wrong but i mean and also when we're looking at budgets and keeping the levy down I, <coughs> as low as bid period when we're looking at i mean you yourself have looked at keeping the levy down so yeah. we want to keep it down let's keep it down and go with the lowest bid i would love it if one of our marshal people would give the lowest bid but they didn't okay. any other input i think everybody understands the information we have before us i would entertain a motion 
So moved. Second. Motion by Steve, seconded by John to accept the lowest, uh, well, let me back up a second. The first action would be the resolution declaring the official intent regarding the reimbursement. Was that your motion, Steve? Yes. And that was your, yes. would you second it? Now, discussion on that motion. If not, we'll move to a vote. We'll close the voting. And the motion does pass. We'll now uh, uh, address the resolution that would accept the bid and award the contract. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by John. Steve, did you second I'll that? I'll second, second it. Second that motion to award the low responsible bid as recommended. Discussion? I have a quick question. Dean, when, when you have maintenance done on these doors and this stuff out at the airport, who do you call for that maintenance? 90%, 99% of the time we do it ourselves. You do it yourself. Okay. Other discussion on the motion? If not, we'll move to a vote. We'll close the voting and the motion passes agenda item number four is uh, project <laughs> WW005 this is the highway 23 lift station improvement project and the pump selection for replacement once again Jason <clears throat> thank you mayor um, so in spring of this year the we, we did bring forward a competitive bid for rehab at this lift station um, the the one bid received was over estimate so we uh, went back to the drawing board and council directed us to break the project into pieces we did not have to do all of that work at one time um, staff looked at it and determined that by doing um, some of the work this year replacing a couple of the pumps and doing a little bit of electric work we could ensure good reliability at that lift station so we elected to go that route and stay within our budget so um, wastewater staff has gone out and uh, solicited some quotes for replacement pumps in this lift station uh, they did receive two quotes for replacement pumps one by uh, submitted from electric pump and the other by minnesota pump works um, you do uh, have in the memo, I don't believe we listed a tabulation on this, but in the memo, we do identify the two costs. The, the flight pumps submitted by electric pump, our uh, two pumps in the amount of $101,904. The quote from Minnesota Pump Works is ABS or Salzer pumps, and those are in the amount of $55,335.83. Um, now, having those quotes in hand, city staff would still recommend that we go forward with the uh, flight pumps provided by Electric Pump. Um, they're a, a product that we have had in this lift station for uh, some of the pumps over 20 years, or longer than that, 90, since 93. And um, we like the reliability provided by them. They, are, they, they offer different features that the other pump doesn't uh, supply, and we've kind of outlined that in the memo. But um, Council would recommend to go forward with the flight pump purchase, but if the council would like to have further discussion, you know, Scott Trudson from our wastewater department is here to um, expand upon the difference in the pumps as well if the council has more questions. Thank you, Jason, and thank you, Scott, for, for providing a pretty comprehensive memo on the, um, the differences between the pumps. So thank you for your, your information about that and sharing your expertise on that. So questions on this? Mr. Mayor, I, I have a, just a comment on it, and I, Scott, I appreciate the, the memo also on, on clarifying the difference in the pumps, and um, I absolutely support the recommendation that our staff has made in, in supporting the difference in the, in the flight pump versus the, uh, the other pump, and I think the, the layout that they, uh, that they presented is, is absolutely uh, reliable, and I think that uh, I know I support to do the recommendation. Any other input? If not, the, uh, I would entertain a motion on the award of the um, 
pump selection. I move we award the pump selection for the flight pumps as proposed. Motion by Craig. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by C. Discussion? Jason? I apologize. My presentation was a little brief. I should clarify, too, that we do believe the total cost of ownership of the flight pumps will be lower than the ABS pumps. I should have mentioned that in my presentation. Right. And that, that also was outlined in the memo and that in terms of the long-term um, operational cost, not only the electricity, but also the repair on the things that are integral to the operation so mr. mayor just to add also it's not just the that cost but it's the reliability the pumps don't fail when you don't need them they fail when you do need them and it's not the city does not want to propose that we store wastewater in people's basements and this uh, pump station Scott you can help me with this this, <coughs> this takes care of the entire southern part of the city correct, correct. Yep. so about a third of the city yep, yep. so other discussion on the motion if not, we'll move to a vote. We'll close the voting. And the motion does pass. We'll move then to the consent agenda. We'll bring the items up on the screen on the consent agenda. And they include Consider the liability coverage waiver for 2023-2024 League of Minnesota Cities Insurance Trust Property and Casualty and Liability Insurance. Consider the approval for a raffle permit for Tracy Animal Rescue for an event on September 9th, 2023. Consider the resolution for signage for ADA parking stalls at 100 West College Drive and consider the approval of the bills and the project payments. Is there any item on the consent agenda any member of the council wants? Remove for purposes of a separate discussion. If not, is there a motion for the items on the consent agenda? Move to approve. Second. By Steve, seconded by Amanda. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. And we'll close the voting. And the motion does pass. We'll move to agenda item number nine. Consider the Adoption of the ordinance for a map amendment, a rezone of the 1000, 1010, 1020, and 1030 East College Drive properties. Jason. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a request by Vesta LLC of Marshall to rezone the property um, at 1030 East Southview Drive. Um, once that request came in, city staff expanded the rezone boundary to cover those other addresses listed. Um, this is the area identified in the map uh, that you can see there. It's at the corner of Minnesota 23 and, and US 59 Main Street um, by the Perkins property there. The existing zoning is B4 Shopping Center District and the proposal is to rezone to a B3 General Business District. Uh, the purpose of the rezone is the B3 District allows more uses. The uh, area all around is B3 and the City Marshal through the latest comp plan process is moving away from the B4 zoning district in general. So staff sees no problem with this request. Um, so staff is recommending to go forward with that rezone in that area to B3. Um, at the June 14th Planning Commission meeting, there was a public hearing held and all voted in favor for the rezone. I can answer any questions if there are some. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Jason. Amanda, any comments from the Planning Commission? No, um, there was no nobody there with concern and it seemed like a like it made sense. So Council have any questions for Jason? If not, is there a motion? So I'll move. Motion by Craig. I'll second. Seconded by Amanda. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Close the voting, and the motion passes. Agenda item number 10, consider the adoption of an ordinance for a map amendment, also a rezone at various London Road properties. Jason? Thank you. Um, this is a request from the City of Marshall, it's City of Marshall and Property, to rezone the area shown on the map um, that'll be pulled up in a moment, just west of London Road. Um, there's potential for future development of a multi-unit residential building, possibly two of them, um, aimed at affordable housing. 
Um, at the June 14th meeting, we did hold a public hearing. There was a good input from the neighborhood present at the meeting. Uh, the proposal is to rezone the area identified in blue there from B1 to R4 for high density residential. Um, there's also a request from the neighborhood during the public hearing to leave a, a strip of R1 for single family right along London Road as a buffer to the development. The original request brought forward was to rezone all the way to London Road, but that was a, a change that came from the public hearing. Um, so that, that, that's the request. And uh, if there's any questions about the development opportunity, Lauren Deitz, uh, our EDA director, is here to help answer those. Um, but for uh, the zoning request, city staff sees no issue with it. It is in general conformance with our new comp plan, which shows this area is mixed use for commercial and residential with the intent that there can be uh, some blending of those uses here. So this, we think this fits uh, well with the comp plan. Thank you, Jason. Once again, Amanda, any comments from the Planning Commission? Um, I think Jason covered it pretty well. Leaving that strip of R1 was kind of their number one request, and we're doing so. Um, I remember Jim brought up, as long as those, that's still big enough to have big enough lots to put houses on, it would be good, of course, important. Um, but I think that was it. And the other thing that was discussed is Paris Road. Well, yes, the traffic. There was concerns about the traffic, but now with the new plan and the is it what is it at the north? Which road? My map. Paris Road. Yeah. Paris Road. Yeah. yeah, being connected to Channel Parkway, I think yeah. that alleviates a lot of that. And city staff, uh, EDA engineering staff has um, kind of passed that concern <clears> along <throat> to the <throat> development folks and they, they are aware that the extension of Paris Road would be a requirement of any development over there. So that, that has been passed along. Um, that while not relevant to the zoning action, it's just good for us to have in our minds that that, that has been discussed. Right. Okay. okay, questions? Yeah, Ms. I just have a quick question. Um, so the single homes, are they going all the way up to Paris then or are they just stopping right at, I can't see what road that is, the green part, the green? <laughs> color are yes. the single homes going all the way up there it just wasn't drawing yes so the um the area identified in red uh, just to the we'll call it the east of that hatched area will remain r1 single family so all the way up to that green area like you had mentioned um the exact location of any lots would be determined through a future platting action okay thank you and back to that picture that square is the existing uh, farmstead Correct. Okay. Just so you kind of have your, your bearings there. Other questions? Mr. Mayor, so I got, a, I got a letter in the mail from a constituent who likes the idea, wants this kind of stuff, but of course wants a little more. Wants it. I don't know if anybody else got the letter, but um, they want underground, they would like underground parking and things like that because they're older and you know, that's a developer thing, but clearly there's a need for it. And so looking for areas of underground parking and things like that, have to realize that Marshall is kind of built on a swamp. So we're kind of, kind of you know, limited with digging underground, especially out there next to the river and the bypass. But Could get an aquatic center out of it. But, yeah. But there's a lot of people who I think are going to love this right. senior housing and be able to move in. And the fact that people are interested in that and want to stay here, this person said if they don't have those kind of amenities, they're going to have to move to Brookings where apparently they have it or someplace that they have it. But that tells us we've got to think about this going into the future to get places like that. So I think this is a good start. And maybe the developer can do stuff. Lauren, that would be good input to pass on to the developer. Even if it is an underground, if it's if it's connected, covered, yeah, you know, just to make it more convenient. We've talked about uh, garages, which <clears throat> the cost of that today. Yeah. So depending on how funding shakes out, it's something that we can discuss. In the future. Right. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, I'd entertain a motion regarding this request for rezoning. Move approval. Second. By Craig, seconded by Jim. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. We'll close the voting. And the motion does pass. 
Agenda number 11, the Broadmoor Valley Paving Project. Consider the city cost participation for the storm sewer. Jason? Thank you, Mayor. Um, so the owner of Broadmoor Valley uh, Mobile Home uh, Community, Shearholes and Associates, has been awarded a $500,000 grant through uh, a Minnesota housing uh, grant program. Shearholes and Associates hired Bolton and Mink to complete construction plans for resurfacing, identified on the map there, along Timberlane Drive, um, Lilac Drive, and Ash Drive in the community. The reconstruction will result in a 20-foot wide bituminous street with five-foot uh, gravel shoulders on each side. Um, the street will be signed for no parking. Um, in addition to the paving of those streets, the project also includes approximately 628 feet of 36 inch concrete storm sewer pipe um, to be installed. And that is actually city storm sewer. So um, that's city trunk storm sewer that's currently 18 inch pipe today. And city staff has identified that segment of pipe to be increased in pipe size to a 36 inch. And we've worked with Bolton and Mank to include that in their project plans. Um, this is included in our CIP as well. I'm, I'm quite certain, EJ, for 2023, we were kind of preparing for this project to come up. Um, and as a cost participation in the project, we're looking for council support and resolution to allow the surface water management utility to pay its end of the costs in accordance with our, our typical process on city reconstructs. Um, so we'd like to uh, discuss that with the council and have the approval to increase the pipe size through the community that um, drains the neighborhoods south of there. So on the screen where we had it up there, the, the storm sewer would go under what's outlined in black. Not that entire area. If you see where it's labeled Spruce Drive there outside of the black, that first street to the west, um, Stephen, the kind of the zigzag shape of street, that's where the storm sewer passes. Can you? It passes through a ditch, through the pipe system in there, and then under Highway 23 and on its way to Tiger Lake. Okay. okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Questions? So that storm sewer helps drain Genesis behind there. Is that the neighborhood we're kind of draining it, that storm sewer? Um, actually not. It links with the pond behind the townhomes okay. um, along Windstar there. So there's that segment of Windstar Street and Patriot Park area that drains through that direction. And then, of course, some of the shear holes and associates uh, farmland. Yeah, there you go. You can see the ditch identified there, and that's where the piping system picks up in the community. So, so unrelated to the storm sewer project, which is what this agenda item is, the uh, resurfacing, is that just included what was outlined in black or does it also include lilac and spruce? And So the resurfacing project that they're bidding, um, I think they're hoping to receive bids on July 20th. Um, it's just the area outlined in black. That's okay. where they think that their money will, how far their money will stretch. I think that there, it's in their mind to try to apply for future grant funds to do the remaining streets. Questions? Well, it certainly is a, a, you know, thanks to the state grant, this is a move in the right direction. I move that we approve the <clears throat> consideration of cost participation uh, in conjunction the same as we do with our normal city projects, where we pay for the pipe and the street above. I will second that. Motion by Craig, seconded by Jim. Discussion? I think the discussion item, and just to reinforce what Jason said, this is for a uh, stormwater that will serve a watershed. Right. That goes all the way to Windstar as well beyond what the, the mobile home park would be, so. Right. Other discussion on the motion? And Bob, maybe in further clarification, if we were going out under or through any other private property with an easement where we we're disturbing this through the easement, we would repair it similarly. This would be very similar to what we did at the golf course. Obviously, we had to put grass at the golf course, but two years ago, we went through the golf course and repaired their, their golf right. course. So Correct. Very, very similar project. Good point. Okay. Other discussion on the motion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Motion. 
will close the voting. And the motion does pass. So agenda item number 12, um, the salaries and compensation of the mayor and council person. So our city charter requires that in July, we talk about this. So, and as we know, there's a ordinance that was passed that actually covers the salary of mayor and council until the next regular election. So the, um, so it is determined by ordinance, but this is to comply, this agenda item is to comply with the, uh, with the charter, which says that the council needs to talk about this every July. Sharon, you want to add anything to that or Pam? I, I just want to add in 2022, we did have Kennedy and Graven provide consultation on the resolution, setting the salary for 23 and 24. And um, the data that was provided was collected by Stephen Anderson, our city clerk. It does not include all 24 salaries. So there's a little bit of a mix. There's some 23s in there. So maybe not a fair comparison, but just using the data that we had, uh, Mayor is uh, fifth out of the 12 cities um, in terms of ranking on salaries. Council is eight out of 12 with our population nine out of 12. So I think we're uh, right in the middle when it comes to uh, comparing to other communities. And this again, may not be entirely comparing apples to apples because we probably have some 23 salary amounts um, located in the comparable data. So am I hearing this right? If we don't raise the mayor's salary, we could lose him to North Mankato? <laughs> <laughs> I think the uh, the other part of the discussion, this is really for a, you know, post e next election, which will be 25 salaries, is that over the past number of years, when we've addressed this, we have looked at what the adjustment for a regular city staff has been for the previous years, and then used that percentage. And that's that's probably a good way to do that, but if we do that for council and the mayor, over time that spread is gonna increase. So I think probably next time, we probably need to look at the council member's salaries different than the mayor's salaries. So, but that's a next year discussion. So what's your saying is you wanna pay decrease as mayor? A freeze. I didn't exactly say that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Any other discussion? There's really no, there's not an action item here, but this is discussion. Go ahead. The only thing that I say all the time, I hate the fact that we have to vote and, and, and discuss this because, again, we hate to raise levy and this is part of the levy. However, we also want to attract good people into this position. And in order to, there's a lot of time and I've calculated it out. This is, less than minimum wage with all the time we're putting in. So much less than minimum wage. This is like 1980 minimum wage. Um, so it's a lot of work, it's not a lot of money. People don't get rich doing this, but you want to at least compensate people a little bit for their time and I think this is the right thing because if we don't do it, people are gonna look, Yeah, especially younger people as opposed to us right. senior sagacious people. Tooth, yeah. um, We'd like more people like Amanda and C to come in, and, and that's where uh, <laughs> we need more diversity and we need to attract people, and let's face it, pay makes a little difference. And John. <laughs> but John's not as, <laughs> you're not quite as young as they are. So what are you saying about John here, Steve? Let's, let's... I put this in my hair. <laughs> you put that in your hair? I think I'm probably... Close to the youngest one here. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Jim is younger than me a little bit. Any other discussion on this? Item? We, do we have to announce our age now? Or? <laughs> I'm going to lay the shovel down. I'll put the shovel in a chair. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, like I'm 19. <laughs> With that. Can, Perfect. It's good that you feel that way. So, so if there's no other discussion, we'll move along then to uh, agenda item number 13, which is Commission Board Liaison Reports. Craig? Nothing, sir. Nada. I think it's a weird time of the month, but no meetings for me either. The, um, 
uh, next week, the um, um, Fire Relief Associated Board of Trustees will have their quarterly meeting. So that's an upcoming meeting. And also Thursday of this week, the Southwest Regional Development Commission has their annual meeting that will be held at the um, Lower Sioux Agency. Mm -hmm. I am going to be unable to attend that. See, I don't know if you're yes, planning I will to be attend. There. Yes. So, and anyone else is welcome. I, I look at C because she's also a member of the full commission. So, um, John? Nothing. C? Um, the DEI commission met last week, and we spent most of the majority of our meeting talking about how to increase engagement in our commission and, and what the purpose of the commission is. So, um, we have some ideas, and we're going to... Um, Kind of run with that so and then the library um, most of it was kind of uh, approving the 20 23 24 budget and see we did have the yes and the city and the county met earlier that morning a very early morning might i add um <laughs> to talk about the budget so and that uh that budget discussion you know as we know the city and the county need to have that discussion prior to each of us our entities starting to work on our budget. So the proposed budget, which really doesn't address anything that would be increased other than the um, salary and benefits that they anticipate uh, that are already um, determined. So it's, I believe it is a 4.5 or 4.3% 4 4 um, suggested increase. So that's, that's what we'll have and that's what the county will have for our our early consideration. So, and I believe when Michelle then comes at the next meeting for the agency, that's what she'll be presenting. Okay. Anything else, Steve? No, that's it, thank you. Jim? The Joint Law Enforcement Center had their annual meeting, but we had nothing on the agenda. There was, it was running smooth, so it was a very short meeting. Other than that, my other committees have not met. Very good. We'll move then to um, council member individual items, Jim. I have nothing. C? Uh, I just wanted to address the vandalism on the bridge. So um, we were up there 4th of July, and there was nothing, and then next day woke up, and we saw that. So um, very unfortunate that um, our beautiful bridge was vandalized. So please um, consider not doing that because <laughs> we it's a beautiful bridge, and, and a lot of people use it, and so we don't want to see writing all over it. Yeah. John? <laughs> Craig? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple things. One, um, I really want to commend city staff and all the other folks involved in the 4th of July celebration. It was awesome. It was really well done. I think very well attended. Um, I think it's something in the community that we can really be proud of. And then the other thing is, is my wife and I went last Thursday night to the terrace for music on the terrace. And I, I people need to pay attention to when that's scheduled and try to go to it. It's actually really, it's a, it's a nice gathering, and I think it shows a lot of promise uh, for activity on the terrace. So good, positive things in the community. Very good. Steve? I have nothing. Amanda? I don't have anything either. So I have two things. The, um, as I think everybody knows, there was a positive detection of emerald ash borer that occurred in late June. So Minnesota Department of Agriculture did the confirmation. Um, so that's, that is serious for the tree canopy in the city of Marshall because roughly over half of the tree population, more in some areas, are, are emerald ash borer and they're all susceptible, are ash and they're all susceptible to emerald ash borer. So on July 19th, Minnesota Department of Agriculture will be doing a online seminar to help homeowners in particular, um, with decision making about what to do with their ash trees. And the, the choices would be um, removal and replacement with a species of tree that number one will grow here and number two is not an ash tree and so it's not susceptible to the emerald ash borer, or to treat that. And then they'll be talking about treatment options and who can do that, how it would be done, and the commitment that treatment would um, would you be making if you're going to commit to treating your tree because you'd need to do that maybe annually, maybe as, as every two to three years, but continue to do that for the, well, as long as you're going to 
have that tree. So, so anyway, July 19th, they are requesting pre-registration. It's an online, so they will do it in person um, either <coughs> late this fall or early winter. They'll do also a um, um, an in-person session that will be more focused on how do you identify if your tree has it or not. So, so uh, Preston and I did a video the day after it was announced or the day it was announced. So, um, so I think the public is fairly aware that this is out. As uh, council knows on July 25th, I will be absent. I'm actually riding the MS uh, right across Minnesota. So, Craig, you're in charge that evening. So, perfect. As president, pro I've been I've been practicing. I've gone to these <laughs> events in the community when you've been out of town with Sharon just to just to practice. Yeah, yeah very good, <laughs> very good. <In> action. <laughs> we do have a gavel here, and I'll I'll take this with me. So yeah, please. No <laughs> Leave your emoji. Leave the uh, yes. frosting emoji, though. I'll use that. <laughs> you've got your own. With that, the uh, we'll move then to staff reports, Sharon. Um, just reiterate, 4th of July, I think, was very successful and uh, will likely be coming back to council to contract with the fireworks provider uh, for future years. They do a great job and um, really are good partners with the city. And we'll probably start planning um, for 4th of July in 24 soon. We've talked to some additional vendors which I know was a comment, and some additional performers. Tunes on the Terrace was awesome, and I think it will grow. We're still under construction, and that's um, because we're using staff to complete the project. So we are saving money by having um, staff do it. Our goal is to complete the Terrace by Sounds of Summer. Uh, did present um, to the City Attorney's Association legal update. Um, our city attorney was there and presented on our DEI commission. And um, it's a very broad topic, and I think that makes it challenging for all the communities. Duluth and Golden Valley were also presenters, and I think they shared somewhat similar sentiments. And um, it was it was good to kind of go back, even though it was formed in 2021, to kind of look at some of the events that may have led to our formation, even though we talked about it in 2019. We had events that happened in 2020 that really solidified what the council did for DEI. So we're hoping to get um, three or four action goals for 2024 uh, to help provide a little more focus for DEI. Part of it is really getting to know each other. We've It's a large group and and even getting to know about the topics is is um, takes some time. And then finally, uh, Preston and I did present to the chamber. Recently, uh, they gave us a unanimous um, letter of support for the Aquatic Center. So they'll be publicizing that a little bit. Uh, we continue to talk to small groups about the Aquatic Center and we've gotten really good feedback on that. Um, I think some good support, but we'll keep providing information. And um, I d I'm not as well versed as the mayor on Ashborer, but I did want to share today, I was talking to some long-term residents of Marshall who remember Dutch Elm disease. And you may kind of, um, from some people maybe here, this isn't a big deal, but they remember Dutch Elm and how it it really changed the look of Main Street, uh, how it had so much shade, and then, then it was really gone in, in, in a very short period of time. So they see the importance and how devastating a tree disease could be. So appreciate uh, the mayor bringing up that topic as well. And that's all I had, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Any questions for Sharon? Jason? Thank you. Um, we'll have a discussion come the end of July with TKDA regarding the airport SRE building. We'll start to have discussions about what we can look to alter and what that might look like to come back to the council with another plan to move forward to get that, that done. So just letting you know about that. Um, last night, the Joint Airport Zoning Board met and they did call for a public hearing to be held in these chambers on September 5th. 
to uh, take input on the new airport zoning ordinance that we'll be looking to pass. As a reminder to the council, that's something that MnDOT has been pushing us to do for quite some time. We're replacing an ordinance from 1978. Um, has some land use restrictions within certain zones um, along the runways. Uh, Planning Commission meets tomorrow night for a variance request to review. Um, our mill and overlay project on our local streets will likely start on Monday now, it sounds like. The mill will be coming in and do a week of milling, and the following Monday after that, they'll start paving. Um, outside of that, uh, just Third Street going on, I think our stormwater project by Legion field or by the, the concrete plant over there under the railroad will likely start in a couple weeks and the MMU water main uh, highway 23 crossing project will probably start in a couple weeks as well but we'll keep you informed as those come along that's all I've got okay any questions for Jason Pam I just like to say thank you to Sharon for attending the MACA conference, which is the City Attorney Association. She did a terrific job and this represented the City of Marshall well. And everybody present was really interested in that as a topic. And it was fascinating to have representation from different types of communities across the state. So um, thank you for that. Uh, so I, uh, the council should be proud. Um, a few projects that we're working on, uh, we had a, a rental committee ordinance um, meeting today that was went well and was productive. You'll probably see an administrative penalties um, provision come in front of you in the near future, and we are starting talking about drafting, separate from the interim ordinance, um, some regulations on just use in public places of cannabis products. So that might be coming in front of the council as well in the early stages. I think that's all. Okay, thank you. Any question for Pam? If not, we have the remaining items on the agenda, including the administrative briefs, the building permits, the listing of upcoming meetings, the council's review. Is there any other item to come forward at this meeting this evening? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Craig, second by Jim. To adjourn discussion. If not, we'll move to a vote. Close the voting, and the motion passes, we are adjourned. <laughs>